Vanastatic Skyhawk, 2 to Lear Alpha is just, making just a hanging out over here, just a beam B touchdown. Chilling on this side of the airplane. It's a nice wide airplane, a lot wider than a cub. Room for two almost up front. Just chilling, trying to trying to get down. Got got some stuff to do. So uh like to uh like to get back on the ground in an expeditious manner, come down about fifteen hundred feet a minute. Try this with the flaps, maybe. See what that does. Oh, there's 40 degree of flap. Actually, wow, that really blanked my tail and actually killed some of my rudder authority. I can't get as much rudder in there with the flaps down as with the flaps up. Flaps up. Whoa, look at that, what that rudder does. Wow. I pulled the flaps in. This is not a good altitude to be demoing this at. But yeah, there's a lot less rudder authority. The nose is going left on me. Wow, cool. All right, time to fly the airplane and stop messing around. Venice traffic, Red Bear Hawk. Left base, runway 23, we'll land and hold short, runway 31, Venice. Oh, that's another fun thing with the Garmin G3X. They don't really like abrupt maneuvers like skidding turns, base to final. All right, so we all know the obvious thing here when we put flaps down, that disturbs airflow over the tail and can oftentimes cause less rotor authority and less elevator authority potentially. What is really interesting here to think about though is I was just trying to come down and kind of discover this or just remind myself about this, really put it into practice kind of by accident. I'm trying to come down, I'm in this hard slip, I got the rudder pegged to the floor as far down as it'll go. My leg is just locked straight out using the stick to make sure I'm still going straight but putting a little bit of aileron in there. And then I was like, man, I wish I could come down faster and I went ahead and ripped in 40 degrees of flaps. As soon as I pulled that flap handle in, the airplane kind of straightened itself a little bit and I had to relax a little bit of the aileron pressure, even though my foot was still locked down to the floor. And I was like, wow, that really canceled out a lot of my rudder authority and actually made the airplane want to go straight. And why this is so important is we just put out a video, maybe you guys didn't see it, about how to determine your crosswind component, your maximum crosswind component, based on how much the airplane will yaw off runway heading when you're overflying the runway. Cool video, links in the description below. Uh, but the FA put out this really neat chart, really for backcountry operations out in Alaska and other places that says, hey, how do you wanna be able to determine what kind of crosswind you can handle in your airplane, given your current flap setting? Well, basically set it all up, fly over the runway, yaw the airplane left and right, and figure out how much rudder authority you really have for a given airspeed, and that equates into a certain max demonstrated crosswind component or theoretical crosswind component. For our Bearhawk Patrol, we had tried this out and we had figured, well, hey, we got about 20 degrees left or right of center line, uh, left or right of center line heading or runway heading with our rudder at 20 degrees of flaps and with 70 miles per hour indicated airspeed. So based on all that, we came up with an answer of about, oh, 24 miles per hour is the max theoretical crosswind component this airplane can handle. And that seemed to be roughly right. About 20, 21 knots was really where we were comfortable with it at. And it was quite a handful even there, but it could do it. And then you were just running out of aileron and rudder authority. The trick here is though, something to really be aware of, hey, in those stiff crosswinds, we always train to use a little bit less flap when there's a lot of crosswind out there. But do you ever think of why? Well, a big reason why I hear is if I had gone no flap to a full flap and I was trying to land in a crosswind, I just cut my max demonstrated crosswind component in half. It's no longer what the POH says. You put the flaps to full and you're going to have a lot less rudder authority as I've demonstrated here. And that's going to translate into a lot less crosswind component that you can handle, especially in a tailwheel aircraft because you'll wind up not touching straight as you're going down the runway and that never ends well. So just food for thought, something to remind ourselves of, trying to stay proficient and it's easy to forget about these things. Easy to know it and kind of put into practice and use less flaps when we have gusty crosswinds, but not always remember why we're really doing that. So hopefully this video reminds you of why and you can actually see it happening here as I'm pulling the flap handle up, deploying the flaps or retracting the flaps, really noticing how much yaw I get out of the aircraft and how much more effectiveness my rudder has with those flaps up and better airflow over it. That's it for this video. If you guys can't fly every day, fly 8mikealpha.com and we'll see y'all in the next one.